Hey gang, welcome back to the big board. And thank you for joining us, or me, as the case may be. Might have a little bit of echo in here tonight, just for a variety of reasons. I think I've oiled the chair. It's way less squeaky than it used to be. It's had WD-40 sprayed all over it, so hopefully uh, we'll be in good shape. And I won't make too much noise for it, and too much background noise. So what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, 1985 Under the Iron Sky, or Under an Iron Sky, I should say. And this is the Checkpoint Charlie scenario. And a lot of folks ask questions, okay, hey, Kevin, what do you mean you're playing Checkpoint Charlie? That's a tiny little one and a half turn scenario. And uh, it's very one-sided and there's really nothing for the uh, NATO forces to do. And you're right. That's because not next week, but the week after, I'll be playing a mid-sized scenario opposed. Won't that be fun? And I'm hoping that uh, I will have resolved my camera woes by that time. And you will uh, be able to see some live streaming of that gameplay. I'll just have the, the phone set up there and we'll be streaming away, going crazy and playing and I may forget to move the camera every now and then. I probably won't be checking in much to, to check on questions, but if you want to see the gameplay and, and I'll probably provide a little bit of commentary, but not a whole lot, uh, then I'm hoping that that'll be the case, that we'll do that. Worst case, I will definitely uh, record some video and, and talk through the activities, etc. Okay, so let's let's have a look at this and let's zoom in a little bit and see what's going on. Uh, we've got <coughs> you know the surrounding area of Berlin, the red blocks that you saw are representing the map edges, except for this one. It's just let me know that that guy's finished, and he has a th three-step loss. And combat losses underneath him. So let's walk through the next action, which was this German unit, which is why he's caught. Uh, he was here and he's moved to here and now he's going to attack across the bridge into the city and just go for it. And the reason why we want to do that is because we only have one and a half turn. So I'm going to get two bites at the cherry. Everyone's going to basically get to move their full movement allowance. And obviously, if you're familiar with the game or aware of the game or aware of the next war, you'll know that full movement allowance means that these guys have a, uh, the ability to attack based on the number of movement points they spend uh, to execute an attack. So we're going to use this guy first to try and soften this chap up here. We have a very low percentage chance of doing any damage, but we might get lucky and we might put a couple of hits on this guy, in which case I'll double down and try and attack again using additional movement points to attack. Uh, if that fails, if we take a loss, so be it, then we'll, we'll bring one of the big boys in here and we'll set them to work. So I've moved five movement points, or I'm sorry, I've moved five movement points. I've moved to here, and now we're gonna attack across the bridge, and uh, we're doing a uh, uh, prepared assault, I believe it is, which off the top of my head, I can't remember how many movement points that cost, which is probably kind of bad, but it's here somewhere. Uh, da, 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 da. Standard assault is four movement points. Uh, that's right. So it's four movement points. We're doing a standard assault in this case. Depending on the type of assault you choose, that's going to impact the the you know, you know relative force you're bringing to the table. So uh, I could choose to uh, make a selection that will give me 150% of my strength. It's kind of an all-in process or I could choose to make an attack that where I'm actually halved as I go into the attack. So that would be a single echelon. Oh no, sorry, that single echelon would, would give me 150% and a column assault would give me, uh, uh, I think 50% of my actual combat value, which is the number nine there, right? Okay, so let's not worry about the movement points for the moment. Let's focus on how combat works and we'll just kind of go through this and we'll see what happens. Keep in mind there's no air to support 
the the Berlin garrison. There's only air available for the Soviets. And in fact, I am going to use one of my choppers. I've got one left here. Well, come on now, buddy. I'm trying to use these right-handed. So we're gonna put this on here. I'm just gonna pop him here for the moment, okay? So that's, we're gonna be bringing nine factors Not very good with my right hand with this, but I've got the camera on the left. Uh, nine factors and nine factors is gonna be 18 factors versus three factors, okay? So it looks like it'll be a six to one attack, but we've got to roll for flak first. <coughs> and there's a flak table here. I'm just gonna roll against it. We'll roll the die and I'll tell you what happens. It's very hard with D-rated flak, which is what these guys are, D-rated flak to get a hit, and in fact, I miss. There are no variable modifiers that are gonna move the die. I rolled a 10, so that's not a good roll. We need to roll seven or less to uh, do sort of any any damage whatsoever. So that's the, the flak. Now, uh, that rings a bell for me because C-rated, C-rated flak might have the range to uh, hit this air that's uh, coming in. So hang on one second, let me check. Yeah, so we would have needed to declare whether this chap was flying at Napa Earth or not. And since we didn't do that, we're gonna assume that he wasn't. Uh, you know, this terrain might make a difference. I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to skim through the rules here. But the uh, net of it all is that uh, I think this C-rated stuff is going to have a, a range because it's range of one uh, to uh, fire at choppers. So we're going to roll again. But keep in mind there's an evasion value and this has an evasion value of six. It's a group of one unit. So that's going to give us a modifier. We're just going to roll the die and I rolled another 10 so it's not going to make a difference anyway. Uh, so the, the choppers go in and now we're going to work out what the odds were. And we said it was six to one. And so that means we're going to grab the uh, combat table and look at the combat modifiers. And we take into account a pretty wide range of modifiers. And I'm not going to run through all of them here. So I'll, I'll just talk the, to them for you. We're attacking across a, a minor river. That's going to give us a uh, plus one, I believe. I'm just looking at the terrain chart here. It's all pretty straightforward here. It's plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Yep, plus one. We're in a city. That's going to give us uh, lots of goodness. Is it city or is it urban? It's uh, the yellow city. So that's three. So that's going to give us a four. And we have the Berlin Garrison bonus, that's five, and then the Hedgehog, six, seven. So that's gonna drive the results table to look like this. There's a combat modifier here uh, on the left-hand side, runs from zero to minus seven and from zero to seven. And then there are the odds across the top. And then you, you cross-reference the die roll in the middle here and then you, you go, okay, I'm at a minus two. I roll a seven, that means it's gonna be a contact. I roll an 11 or a 20 or a 15. That's an A1 result. And so we're going to conduct whatever the A1 result is. And we'll talk about what those things are in a sec. Okay, because I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get an A1 result here because the net is gonna be seven. And I know that because I already worked it out earlier on just so that wouldn't look, I wouldn't look completely stupid in front of you. So I'm gonna roll a die, and we wanna roll uh, pretty high here. Which is interesting, actually, as I think about it, because you need to roll low on the flak missions and ground strikes, I believe. Uh, you gotta roll high on the ground strikes. Okay, here we go. And I rolled a seven. So there's our die roll, a seven. So I'm gonna go across to the six to one table here and um, seven is the highest one and uh, five to nine is a contact okay so that's actually a, a, an okay result for this for the 
a Warsaw Pack player because contact means there's no losses, but the attacker must stop. So, so that means this guy's going to be done for the turn. He's going to finish there. This chopper's going to go back. I'm going to move him to the bottom of the stack. He's done for his activity for this action phase. Uh, this guy cannot spend more movement points and try and attack again. His participation in this aspect of the game turn is over. And so now we are going to uh, move into the next, moving the next unit. And I'm going to just going to go ahead and bring this big bad boy in here. And he's going to come in and go, and he won't be attacking across the river, but he will be attacking out of the city. Uh, so, or urban, I should say. I guess that's urban, right? Yes. But we're going to go one into here. I think it's one. Doesn't really matter. That's tactical mode. One. And then we're going to attack. And we're going to spend the movement points to do that, which will be um, more than enough, right? So it'll be four or whatever I said it was, a standard attack is. And we're probably going to have a similar set of DRMs, except that we're not coming across the bridge or the river. And that was a one. So it's going to be, a, should be a plus six going on here. And we've got 18 versus three. So that is going to make it uh, not 7, uh, 14, 21. So it's not going to be a um, 7 to 1 attack. It is going to be a 6 to 1 attack. So it'll be a, a 6 to 1 on the 6 column this time. And this time I roll a 9. And I'm going to look at the, the 6 column and I'll look at a 9. And <laughs> it's another contact, right? I'll show it to you. There's the column. Where's my thumb? There it is there right there. So now this guy is going to be done for the turn as well. Now we've got a little, a bit of a tricky situation because I was hoping to kind of beat this up a little bit and prepare it for being busted on next turn. And I haven't been able to do that. And while I can now, I can now focus in on uh, the US uh, forces here, I, I've got, uh, I can pick up some adjacency bonuses. Actually, that is one thing that I probably didn't get here. Let me just check for consent, a concentric bonus there. That might be, that might pull that from a six to a, uh, a six to a five or even less, which we had a nine. Either way, you know, we're not, we're not gonna get to a, a, a better result for ourselves, but let me just check real quickly. And unfortunately, while I would have received a bonus for these units being adjacent, we're in a we're attacking into a city hex. There are no zones of controls. The zones of control go into a city hex, so we're not going to get that concentric uh, concentric bonus, which would move move the odds one to the right. And if it had have moved it one to the right on that six column, we still would have had the contact result anyway. I don't believe there's anything else that would have, um, well, let me see, it would have been seven to one, eight to one, uh, which would have given us a modifier and brought it down to a five, which, yeah, still would have had the same result. So, makes nix, right? Uh, so we go through a lot of this grinding on trying to get it exactly right ends up given the, the die roll spreads and things like that with the d20 and the, these uh, combat modifiers, it's not gonna be a big deal. Coming back to uh, the US forces here, I was gonna use my electronic warfare unit, but electronic warfare doesn't work in cities. So that's not gonna be very helpful to me. Instead, I am going to find where I put all that artillery it's there. And something tells me that I may have made a mistake there. <clears throat> By moving it there, I'm not going to use it. But look, we're going to be max odds anyway. So I've got 17 attacking three. Ugh, that's just not enough. Uh, but maybe we can do a single echelon attack and use six movement points and get 150% of our power. But that is going to force up our loss ratio uh, significantly if I roll badly. 
Uh, that's one of the, 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 the downsides of using this, but I need, I need to get some decent odds here. So let's see what happens if we do that, right? So we're gonna do a single echelon assault and the prerequisite is going to be uh, met because it's a single division and is a uh, unit launching the attack can have no more than one step loss. All right. So we're multiplying this bad boy by 1.5. That's going to pop us up to actually 1.5 is going to give me uh, some die roll modifiers here. Okay. So let's see. I've got 18, uh, 17 factors here uh, times 1.5 is going to bump me up to about 24. It's going to make it 8 to 1, which means I'm going to receive a combat modifier for for that. So there's one for us, for the Soviets, and there'll be another uh, odds bumped up uh, because I have a concentric uh, attack coming from this direction as well. So that's going to bump me up uh, another odds level, which would make it nine to one. And that would then give me an additional uh, DRM, or oh, sorry, uh, combat modifier. So that's two combat modifiers to the benefit of the Soviets versus uh, versus a net six benefit to the allies or the NATO forces because we get three for the city, two for the hedgehog and one for Berlin. And that is it. This time we don't get any river crossing or anything like that. So I'm gonna look, you can look here. There's the little list of DRM. Uh, I keep saying DRMs, but that the combat, the ground combat modifiers, right? And we're not going to add any further combat factors in here. I guess if I did, it would bump the odds up even further and would give me one more uh, or two more modifiers. Do I want to do that? I think I want to keep my powder dry for my next division, this division here. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring in the last chopper and maybe some aircraft as well against this because uh, I probably need to knock this guy out this turn. But let's see what happens, okay? So uh, I said that was a six minus two is going to be a four. So we're going to be on the four row. Let's see what we roll. Ooh, roll a 15 this time. That... Let's see what a 15 will do to you. Now there's no cadre rating changes here uh, because they're both equivalent uh, categories. And if you're familiar with the next war, you know what I'm talking about when I say cadres. Okay, so let's have a look at the bad news. Uh, I said we're on the four column. So I'm gonna come across here on the brown and I said I roll a 15 right here, and A1. Okay, <clears throat> that's really gonna hurt. Because I said I was using the single echelon assault prerequisite, uh, sorry, uh, uh, single, uh, single echelon assault. So I have to take two step losses. And these are gonna be VPs for the bad guys, right? So here's how that works. So we take uh, a single step loss, and then because they are Soviet, the second step, the second combat loss is this, I'll show you, is a, uh, is a three, right? So now, if we were uh, able to continue fighting, uh, we would, uh, we would now have a, a negative penalty applied to us on the combat modifiers that's equivalent to this, or actually equivalent to, the, I think the delta between the two is what it'll end up being. So A1, attacker must lose a step, and it's at this point that I need to decide with that on that unit, do I wish to continue spending movement points and attempting to attack, or do I wish to uh, move away? Uh, can I move away? I don't believe I can, because I have to stop on Android zone of control. Uh, but uh, move, you know, either move away or, or conduct a disengagement attack, uh, potentially. Or do I want to end my movement here, bring this guy in, and then I'll have two 
combat modifiers or two odd shifts coming my way with this guy coming in to attack. So that's something to think about. We're gonna noodle on that for a little while. This is a fairly long video here, so I'm probably gonna pause it here, go back and double check the rules to make sure I was indeed playing correctly. And any errors I note, I shall uh, append into the notes in the video. And I hope you enjoyed a very, very high level, little light touch, little look at Under an Iron Sky. You can probably see despite my long windedness that these, these attacks can actually happen pretty quickly. You run down a little checklist and boom, you, you've got a, a feel for what's going on in the combat here. And you've got uh, an understanding of the, 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 the different types of combat modes that you can use, column assaults, single echelon assaults, uh, assault from march, <coughs> disengagement combats and uh, there's some special NATO active defense uh, type of stuff as well. So I hope you enjoyed that little brief look and we'll look in more detail at other aspects of the game system in another future video. Thanks for watching the big board.